Now we're going to talk a little bit about um, Study Abroad 101. Yeah. So um, there's three basic options um, as far as programs of what type of programs you study on as a Webster student. So we have our global campus network. Um, so those campuses you've heard from already. So that includes um, coming to the United States um, if you are a student at one of our international campuses, uh, studying abroad here in St. Louis, where I am. Um, and then also, um, you can go to uh, Leiden in the Netherlands that we heard from this morning, to Thailand. Um, you can go to Geneva in Switzerland. And then we just had the session with Vienna in Austria, Athens, Greece, and Accra, Ghana, um, as our international campus network where students can study abroad. Um, I think we have some students joining us from Uzbekistan as well. Um, definitely part of the international campus network. Don't want you to feel left out. Um, we just haven't started sending study abroad students to Uzbekistan yet. So um, students from Uzbekistan are more than welcome to study abroad at our international campus locations. We're just not sending any students there yet, um, but soon in the, in the future, that's the plan. Um, and then we also have international partner programs. So we do have partner and exchange programs um, that are not a that are not Webster campuses. They're affiliated with Webster through, through a partnership agreement or relationship that we have with that university um, to send students to them. Um, but those programs are a little bit different. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And as well as we also have faculty led opportunities um, in the fall, spring and in the summer. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about those as well. So our global campus network, I already mentioned a little bit. Um, you see a beautiful photo of Vienna um, right there. Um, there's kind of a main street in, in Vienna that leads down to Steffenplatz and it's really just a, a five, 10 minute walk from campus to city center of Vienna. So a great place to be. Um, and then we have um, Geneva was our first um, international campus. Um, and so we've had have Geneva, Switzerland, um, Leiden, Netherlands, Athens, Greece. Um, in Thailand, we do have two campuses. Um, it says Cham there. Um, Cham is where we send um, all of our undergraduate study abroad students, study abroad in Cham. Um, our graduate students do study abroad in Bangkok. There's a campus in Bangkok, um, but for study abroad students is, is strictly a graduate location. Um, so if you are a grad student, you can go to Bangkok. Um, Cha'am is located about three hours south of Bangkok on the Gulf of Thailand. Um, it's a, a seaside uh, resort area, um, really nice. Um, but just so you know where Cha'am is and then, and then in Accra, the capital of Ghana in West Africa. And so our international partners. Um, so these are campuses that are not Webster campuses. Um, so they're great opportunities to, to study um, in other countries outside of Webster's network. Um, the academics work a little bit different though with international partners because at any of Webster's international campuses, when you study abroad, you are taking a Webster class. So you don't have to transfer credits, wonder if it's gonna count for your degree. Um, with the international partners, um, if you go, for example, to our campus um, in Tokyo, where this, where this photo is of uh, Oberlin University in Tokyo, Japan, um, if you go there, um, you're not going to be taking Webster classes, you're going to be taking Oberlin classes. And so you have to get those courses approved um, by Webster faculty and deal with the transfer of credits, um, which is definitely not an insurmountable thing if that's where you want to go. But that's just kind of um, something that makes Webster's international campuses a little bit a little bit easier, um, but these are great opportunities to, if, if you're studying um, Japanese, for example, um, a lot of our students who are Japanese minors choose to study abroad at, at one of our partners in Japan. So I mentioned Japan already, which is mentioned here. Um, we have the partner Oberlin in Tokyo, as well as a partner um, with Kansai University in Osaka. Um, and then uh, we also have two partners in, in the UK. We have the University of Roehampton located in London. Um, as well as Oxford Brooks University located in Oxford in both in, in England. Um, then we have uh, a partnership with Kent State University, which is actually a US university uh, based in Ohio, but they have a campus in Florence, Italy, um, and we partner with them. Um, and so we send our students to, to Florence as one of our partner locations. Um, and then we have um, kind of language intensive programs that there'll be a session on, on later with partners in Belgium for students studying French. Um, it's really like a French immersion, a French language focused program. And then we have two Spanish programs, um, one in Spain and one in Mexico, in Spain in, in Oviedo in Northern Spain and Mexico in, in Guadalajara, the second, second largest city in Mexico. Um, and then we have a um, language, German language program um, in Trier in, in Germany. 
Um, so the faculty-led programs, um, there will be another presentation later this afternoon specifically on faculty-led programs where the faculty leaders will actually speak about their programs. Um, but just so you know how those work, um, they're kind of, a lot of times they're hybrid courses um, where sometimes you get three credit hours. Some faculty-led programs are only one or two credit hours. It depends a little bit um, on the program. But the standard is that it's still a three credit hour class. Um, but you complete a ton of the content in like a one week period. So a really intensive period. But during that one week, you're traveling with all your classmates as well as the professor, um, the instructor for the class to another country to, to do that content on ground. Um, so some of those classes uh, meet in person. Um, for example, if, if you're a student in Webster Groves, um, maybe you're going abroad for spring break and your class might meet you know, once a week or, or might meet a couple times prior to spring break. Um, sometimes they're offered as online classes to where you might meet online with your class. Um, in, in that case, those, those programs are offered um, not just to students in Webster Groves, but students at any camp of our campuses around the world because um, you can attend the class online and then meet your classmates and your professor um, on the ground um, when with the study abroad portion of the trip. Um, so during fall, uh, those normally fall during fall break. I know in the United States this year, we, we cut fall break out of our calendar um, with COVID complications. Um, so fall study abroad programs have been canceled anyway. Um, but moving forward, we do have um, programs scheduled for spring break 2021. So those are our spring semester courses that you would register for that would travel over spring break. And then there's also summer options as well. Um, and then we're planning, they're not um, officially um, open for applications yet, but we're planning some courses for fall break 2021 um, as well. So it's kind of how those work. So the, the uh, countries you see at the bottom are, are programs that we currently have that we're offering. So um, there's a program scheduled to go to Costa Rica um, and Ecuador and Thailand and New Mexico are all scheduled for um, spring break. Um, you can see a lovely photo of Florence here um, and see Italy highlighted at the bottom. Um, that program was was originally scheduled for, for spring break but has been pushed to, to fall break due to kind of coronavirus complications, but um, hopefully that program is, is offered in fall break 2021. Um, so you can learn more about each of those programs um, at a session later. I'm happy to kind of answer some questions about them too if, if we have some questions following up. So um, eligibility for study abroad, um, undergraduate students, you have to have completed 15 credit hours. Um, so basically you can't study abroad your first semester, but um, once you've completed 15 credit hours, you're eligible to study abroad if you have a 2.5 GPA or higher. Our two partners in the UK do require a 2.8 GPA. If you're interested in going to Oxford or to London, you have to have a 2.8. Um, and then being good in social and financial standing basically just means um, that you're not on uh, probation for conduct violations with the university that you don't have uh, financial holds on your account preventing you from being able to be registered for, for classes abroad. Um, other than that, it's, it's not a competitive process. Um, we, any students who meet the eligibility requirements are, are able to study abroad through Webster. Um, if you're a graduate student, um, it's a little bit different. You have to have nine credit hours completed in a 3.0 GPA um, is the requirement for graduate students. Um, so things to consider when, when thinking about studying abroad um, is academic fit. So um, different programs have different academic opportunities. Depending on your major, your degree program that you're in right now, you probably want to pick a, a program that offers courses that will help um, you towards graduation and, and completing your degree. Um, so we can talk about how to do that. Um, and then uh, sometimes, you know, like we just talked about, if you're, you know, a management major, a psychology major, for example, international relations, um, those degree programs that are offered across the entire Webster network, so you don't have to worry as much about the academic fit, um, but more about kind of the personal and the location of what are you trying to achieve with study abroad, what are your cultural interests, where would you like to travel, um, those sorts of things definitely uh, are factors to consider when deciding what, what program to choose. Um, so with your academics, definitely recommend you to talk to your academic advisor. Let your academic advisor know that you're interested in studying abroad. Um, a lot of majors 
um, actually have kind of mapped out their four-year degree plans. Um, a lot of academic departments have taken majors and have selected kind of the best semester for students to study abroad within their degree plan. Um, so definitely talk to your academic advisor and they might be able to tell you, yeah, we recommend that all um, students in your major study abroad the second semester of their junior year, for example. Um, so um, it, that's a great idea to talk with your with your academic advisor. Um, even if your major is not offered abroad, doesn't mean that you can't go abroad. We have students um, go abroad all the time whose majors are not offered at our international locations, um, especially here in Webster Groves where we offer about 90 majors. Um, there's a lot of majors that are not offered, um, but if you're a Webster student, um, regardless of your home campus, you have the same GCP requirements for graduation. And so GCP courses are taught at all of Webster's international locations. And then courses even at our partner locations, um, obviously aren't coded for a global citizenship program, uh, being non-Webster classes, but they can be pre-approved to count for GCP credit um, sometimes. So it's definitely still possible to get GCP credit um, while studying abroad. So even if you don't fulfill your your major requirements, you can still be working towards uh, completing your degree requirements by completing those, those GCP courses. Um, and then also language programs. So a lot of people decide to study abroad based on language, um, specifically, you know, if they're studying German, French, or Spanish, or Japanese, um, we have students choose campus locations um, based on being able to earn credit hours in those, those languages. Um, so here's just a quick map about kind of degrees offered abroad. So you, these are not um, by any stretch of the imagination, all of the degrees offered um, in St. Louis. Um, we obviously have the most degrees offered here at the main campus in St. Louis where it's the, the biggest student population. Um, but you can see a little bit of how some of the degrees are offered across the campus network. Some of them are only offered in one or two locations. So this is kind of a good resource um, to know if you're a finance major, for example, um, that maybe you want to look at, at Geneva or, or Ghana for where you want to study abroad. Um, then we have the same thing for, for graduate programs here. Um, so the MBA program and the Masters of International Relations is also offered across the board. Um, so that's a pretty easy um, one to choose. You kind of have your destination of choice for those programs. Um, so personal goals as well. Um, study abroad is a, a huge um, experience that can be life-changing. It was for me, I studied abroad myself, um, gained language proficiency um, to where it, it can open doors for you, professional doors um, down the road, as well as networking, um, making friends with, with people from around the world um, is a really unique experience, is a great thing to put on your resume. Um, after you study abroad, um, you know, we have a lot of uh, Webster's campuses have career support services, offices that are more than happy to sit with you post study abroad and talk about how do you talk about st your study abroad experience and interview, how do you put it on your resume, um, that sort of thing. Because um, a lot of employers look for, for students to have had, you know, unique diverse experiences throughout their, um, their undergraduate degrees. So study abroad is, is a great tool. Um, then location, obviously, um, if you have if you have desire to go to a certain certain place, um, obviously we have one campus in in Africa. We have one campus in Asia. Um, we have four in in Europe. So a little bit different in Europe that um, if you want to travel around Europe, there's not necessarily one campus that's that's the best fit for that. Pretty much all four of our campuses in Europe are really accessible for traveling around the rest of the continent. Um, but very culturally different from each other too, if you have certain interest. Um, so financing study abroad. Um, so financial aid, um, at least speaking from a United States perspective for any students who are here in Webster Groves, if you study abroad during the fall or the spring semester, um, your, fin your financial aid travels with you. So your federal, state, and institutional aid is the same. Um, we talked about earlier in the previous um, session about how you pay your home campus tuition. So um, even if you are, uh, if you're from uh, the Webster Groves campus and you're studying in Vienna, you continue to pay your tuition in Webster Groves um, even while you're in Vienna. So nothing changes as far as um, the tuition on your student bill, which means that your financial aid um, and your scholarships also are retained while you're studying abroad. Just because you got your scholarships from, from Webster Groves doesn't mean that you don't get them if you're in Vienna for the semester. So that's 
um, a great thing. Um, we also have additional study abroad scholarships. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but there are scholarships that even if you don't regularly receive them, you can apply for them um, through the same system that you apply for the study abroad program. Um, and you can get that um, those scholarships awarded and credited to your student account just for the semester that you're studying abroad or the term um, or the summer, um, whenever your program is, um, you can be eligible for additional scholarship money to help fund your study abroad. And then also the Webster World Traveler program. Um, I think there's more information on, on that coming up uh, next, but I'll, I'll mention that. Um, and then, then creative uh, fundraising. We've had students um, have fundraising campaigns, different ways to help them um, afford to study abroad. Um, there's outside scholarships as well too. Um, so financial aid um, is definitely talk to your financial aid advisor um, that you have now. Um, mentioned that you want to study abroad. Actually part of the study abroad application is that you have to meet with your financial aid advisor and have them um, sign a form basically saying that you met with them and that your, your file's up to date and everything so that we know that you're going to be good when you're studying abroad um, for the scholarship. So here's um, one of the scholarships I was mentioning. So um, this Webster World Traveler program, the first one listed here, um, is an amazing opportunity. Um, Webster pays for your round trip airfare to study abroad if you study abroad for a term or longer. So short term faculty led programs are unfortunately not eligible for that award. But if you're going abroad for an eight week term for a full semester for an academic year, um, you're eligible for the Webster World Traveler program. Um, so you don't have to worry about buying your flight. Um, so that's that's a great advantage of, of studying abroad through Webster um, that you don't have to worry about the airfare. You are only eligible for that award once. Um, so if you do wanna study abroad multiple times, that's something to, to think about how you use that award, but um, that's definitely a great deal that, that most universities are, are not paying for their students' flights. So that's really great. Um, and then these are the list of some other scholarships um, that we give out for study abroad. So um, last year, we gave out um, about $100,000 um, worth of study abroad scholarship money. So um, there's definitely scholarships to be had um, with an average award amount of about $1,500 a student um, for students who apply. Um, they are uh, merit-based scholarships as well as, as, well as need-based scholarships. Um, so um, if, you've, if you're in the United States, if you filed FAFSA, um, if you receive financial aid, definitely encourage you to, to apply for um, study abroad scholarships. And um, then external scholarships, I can't go into detail on that because there's way too many um, to mention, but um, just so you know, uh, there are other scholarship opportunities too that you can do your own research on. Um, we can support you in any way that we can, um, but there are other organizations, institutions that um, provide scholarships to outside of outside of Webster. Um, I have a, a question that just came through is if you can apply for more than one scholarship. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so the cool thing about this is so the Webster World Traveler program that I mentioned that pays for your airfare is its own unique application. All of these other scholarships down here below the Webster World Traveler are applied for through uh, a common application. Basically, there's an application that's just called Study Abroad Scholarship Application. You fill it out. Um, you fill out the um, your your student information. Uh, you write a couple essays. You get some letters of recommendation, and that application counts for all of those scholarships. So you can be considered for any scholarship that you meet the eligibility criteria for. Um, so yeah, that's a great a great resource. Um, yeah. So um, next uh, next steps. If you're if you're planning for the future, if you don't have a passport currently and you know you want to study abroad, that's definitely a first step. Um, you can apply uh, without a passport. Um, we have students all the time decide that they want to study abroad and, and they don't have passports yet. Um, that's not uh, doesn't prohibit you from applying, but you will need a passport um, before you travel. And in a lot of cases, you need a passport before you can apply for a necessary student visa. So definitely just something to have um, on hand. U.S. passports are good for 10 years. So even if you don't study abroad for, for a year or two, um, not a bad um, idea to have. I will mention that right now, due to the pandemic, um, passport processing times have been greatly increased. So if you're thinking about studying abroad, um, if you're thinking about studying abroad in the summer 
uh, even next fall, I definitely would encourage you to go ahead and apply for a passport if you don't already have one. Uh, normal processing times in the United States is, is six to eight weeks with an option to pay more to expedite it in two to three weeks. They're currently not expediting passports. Um, and the six to eight weeks is more like three to four to five months right now. Um, just because operations closed for a while during the pandemic. So there's kind of a backlog of passport applications. Um, but that's enough about passports. Um, meet with your advisors. Definitely talk to your academic advisor about your plans to study abroad. Even if you're a first semester freshman, um, it's never too early to mention that plan. Um, and then to um, apply. So there's nothing uh, prohibiting you from applying once you meet the, meet the eligibility requirements. You uh, apply online and you can take more questions about that um, when we get to it. So I mentioned a little bit about passports. You can find all the information on, on U.S. State Department's website about U.S. passports. Um, then mention me with your advisors. Um, we talked about um, financial aid uh, counselor as well as academic advisor and then your study abroad advisor. If you are in Webster Groves, um, I'm your study abroad advisor. Um, if you are at one of your the international campuses, um, each campus has an advisor, a study abroad advisor at their own campus. So um, if you don't know who that person is at your campus, um, feel free to, to reach out to me and I can definitely let you know who that, who that person is. Um, and then apply. So this is the system um, that you apply through. Um, it's, it's fairly, fairly straightforward, um, but when we get to that point um, to when you're actually applying, more than happy to, to help you through um, that process. Um, to learn more um, right now, I'll plug, we're, we're doing kind of a series of, of takeovers on Instagram. If you don't already follow us on Instagram, um, you should. Um, so we will uh, kind of resume that next week. We took a break this week because of the study abroad fair today. Um, but if you followed us last week, Thailand was taking over um, the account the week before that, um, Geneva and uh, Vienna took over the account. Um, so every um, campus is gonna is gonna have a turn doing a takeover um, with a live session on Wednesday. Um, so you can can learn more about um, learn more about all of the, the the programs and what it's like living in our different campus locations. Um, 